Yeah, so yeah, digital transformation, everybody's talking about the digital transformation and that's kind of surprising since we have digital technology in our lives for a long time already. I mean, computers, I think this is a thing we always think of when we think of digital technology. It's already quite present in our lives for a long time. There was also something like um, uh, digital watches. Uh, some people might remember this or we have washing machines. Uh, with some chips in it. So that has been around for quite a while and we are very much used to working with it. Um, so what is really changing now? Uh, well, the point is that nowadays we do not only have these machines in some areas of our lives, but wherever we go, whatever we do, all of us basically have some digital technology with us, like a cell phone or a uh, navigation device or whatever. So digital technology is everywhere in human life. It has really permeated all, all the things that we do. And uh, often we are really uh, depending on it nowadays. And that changes the quality of the technology and the way how we use it. And this is the reason why we now talk about a digital transformation. The Internet of Things, uh, this is a term uh, that plays a huge role in the context of uh, this digital transformation and it describes uh, the network of these uh, digital devices in our lives. Uh, nowadays these devices are not like standing on their own uh, like machines used to uh, do in the past but they really exchange data, they store data, and uh, that means that these physical objects are somehow represented by entries uh, in something that uh, looks very much like the internet that we know, except that uh, it's not so much about web pages uh, that are somewhere stored on a machine, but it's really about representations of physical objects uh, in this network structure. Artificial intelligence, uh, this is a term that uh, came up when the first computers were built. So it has a lot to do with uh, uh, digital technology. And originally the idea was that these computers would really um, think uh, at some point like a human being. And some people still talk about that. So the machine would basically in the end replace the human and does the same thing that the human being does. Um, that um, is the old idea of, uh, of artificial intelligence. Uh, nowadays, we have found out that the huge advantage of uh, this digital technology is that it actually can do things differently than a human being. And there again, the Internet of Things and such network structures play, play a very important role. Um, because these network structures allow uh, such a machine to really use information uh, from other sources to uh, get input uh, um, in real time that actually can inform uh, the kind of activities that this machine then executes. So in this sense, uh, that allows the machine to be intelligent but in a completely different way uh, than a human being. Yeah, um, the Knowledge Society or the Information Society, these are also terms that you hear very often in uh, the context of a digital transformation. Again, they are not completely new. Um, we have talked about the Information Society already in the 60s. Um, the idea behind it is that with these digital representations of these machines, um, the physical reality uh, kind of loses importance. So we do not really have to be there to operate this machine. We can be somewhere uh, quite remote. Yeah. We really have a possibility to operate machines that are spread around the whole world, operate them together as if they were at one space and as if we were right next to it. And uh, that means, of course, that uh, the information that is processed and this uh, representations of these machines in information technology, they actually play 
uh, the main role and the physical reality kind of loses a bit of an, uh, importance. And that's what uh, uh, is expressed, I think, in the term of information uh, society as we use it today. And then there's the idea of a knowledge society and that brings, in, uh, brings back in the human being. So um, you could think of this whole system of, of uh, machines as something where the human being is not necessary anymore. Um, and that's true when you think about data processing and information, but it's not true uh, if you think about knowledge. So knowledge that would be describe what this information really means and what it's good for and what we want to do with it. And this is something that uh, still is the domain of a human being that operates these machines, that uh, invents new machines and decides where we uh, yeah, uh, where the development should go. So, um, knowledge society basically that defines our role and the way how we interact with this technology today.